Good evening, everybody. Um, it's an honor to be here and to be sharing my poetry with you. Uh, it's good to have a audience for the kind of uh, political things I write about sometimes that really help me to kind of process what's going on um, in my backyard and our safety in those mountains. And then, um, I just want to give thanks right now for for this day to my ancestors uh, for being here with us, um, to my mentors, a lot of them are here tonight, and uh, a lot of these poems are directly from the stories and teachings that I'm still learning about from my elders, so um, I'm grateful for them and for the opportunities to have a voice and um, share my perspective and just really encourage everyone to use their creative voices in whatever way you can. Um, to speak out about what's important to you. And so I'm going to start, um, just get right to it. And this first one is called Bad Neighbors. Crackling cold wraps my face in alert awareness, feeling stiff as a frozen blanket meant for the dog. Gray horizons form daily because of countless fogons and open air burning. And I step back into my own warmth, steadily beating back a smile savoring sweet coffee, grateful for home and sincerity, wanting more, greedily, with the just intent, for my two shining daughters to never feel such gray clouds, or fear the wind or the river, or the shining water that collects in the cold, to never be looked down on by anything, beyond the reach of malice up on the hill, beyond the exposure of tainted space, time is spinning around again, the spiral is closing before it widens, Bravery is falsified like calcified heat-resistant rock on space shuttles, taken from mountains who made love to flame. Monoliths can endure and sleep beneath the madness, and busy ants endure this dependence, with the loyalty made of brittle snakeskins, unable to shed the old, festering beneath layers of dead ideology, beneath the weight of knowing. Ignorance is blissful when El Norte is so beautiful, the heaviness of manufactured death can become a cloud, dark with empty promises of a future, rumblings of an empty stomach, an illusion of rain and snow, ominous promises whispered, even as the sun breaks through, and I finally let myself smile. <laughs> so, right now there's this big issue that a lot of groups and um, Organizations and individuals have been fighting called the CMRR facility. Um, are you all familiar with that building? Okay. <laughs> Some of you will. It's a. Um, I facilitate a community group where we try to educate ourselves on a lot of the things that are constantly happening. And it took so long just to even wrap my head around what the name of this facility meant. So I, um, I wrote this poem. And I took the poetic license to switch. So CMRR stands for Chemical Metallurgy Research and Replacement Nuclear Facility. But in the poem, I switched um, the research and replacement around. <laughs> Thought it worked better. <clears throat> CMRR. Chemical Metallurgy Research and Replacement Nuclear Facility. Chemical. Chem. Ick. Culls by the hundreds, chemical dirt, chemicals in our air, chemicals in plants we pick, chemical warfare, chemical incendiaries, chemical endangerment of health and well-being for all life that exists here, chemi kill waste dumps, chemical explosives, chemicals in our environment that cancels out true chemistry of love and compassion for life here, chemicals created by man that end up somewhere they are not wanted, chemicals accumulating in our cells, Chemicals not wanted up here on our mountains. Chemicals not wanted where they can enter delicate bodies and ecologies. Metallurgy. Metallurgy. Metal clergy. Metallic luster of shiny encased plutonium triggers. Metallurgy wrapped in chemical warfare. Embrace of perverse creation whose mission is destruction. Metal orgy of science and technology with no caresses saved for morals or values. 
Only metallurgic power, metallurgical world coercion, metallurgical brilliant minds numbed to the existence of natural law, numbed to the peoples who have yet to be looked in the eye, recognized as trying to continue existing here. As always, we were here before and after metallurgy. Native respect for volcanic molten metallurgy that we know needs to remain sleeping beneath these fault zones. Replacement. Replacement. Replace earth and ancient stone with 325,000 cubic yards of cement. Replace our clean water with contaminated existence. Replace cool pools and springs with disrespect. Replace the blood in our bodies with fire and cancer. Replace old obsolete ideologies with the same old obsolete ideologies. The same intention and disregard for peoples living here. Replace common sense for profit. Replace dialogue for imperial impunity. Replacement of peaceful coexistence with arrogant separation. Disconnection to land ensuring exploitation. Continued colonization. Replacement of honorable warrior societies with pollution of our shared world. Brute force that comes with false perceptions that man is at the top of it all. Replacement of land-based purity with economic dependency. Exploiting the quiet resolve of workers who are not a Lano community. Replace sustainability with limits of choices for decently paid employment. Research. Research. Searching again for militarized perfection. Researching smaller, more usable bombs and bullets. No research on releases of depleted uranium devastation that does not discriminate between soldiers or children walking through dusty, war-torn streets. Research that needs to transform. Research coming from head people with forgotten connections to heart and spirit. Research that has the potential to benefit instead of harm. Research instead the knowledge of people who can help heal this place they are part of. Research reciprocity with the land. Research indigenous ancestry from across oceans. Research health impacts and state truth in ways that creates true partnerships. Research how to remediate the invisibility of native peoples throughout this lab's history. Nations in forced proximity to military. Research the priceless value of our communities. Research how to enact cleanup technologies. Research how to heal this place for the benefit of all. Keep researching for that place of enlightened transformation and changing an old mission into life affirming work. This next one I wrote a while back with them. Um, I called them the Lionel Seven, and they were arrested. Um, at a protest. So this was for them. It's called Free the Water Serpent and the Lionel Seven. The Lionel Seven carried water from a ceremony, dressed in colors and God intentions, speaking for the clear blue life that flows universally through us all. Intergenerational footsteps marched through baby streets. Manufactured homes cannot recreate a culture. There are no roots in this place of bonds that was once ancestral homelands to Pueblo people, and now filter the classes, the working masses, and the production of mass destruction, brown workers wearing only gloves, usually worn to get wood for the winter to keep their families warm through the cold. Now fathers' unprotected hands bury barrels of radioactivity, layers of mixed waste for our grandchildren. Unseen, purposely hidden catastrophe on a mesa where sacred kivas once echoed songs for life, Avanyu is being forced into reactors that turn blessings into death, forced to swirl into, forced to become, tritiated poison penetrating the unborn. Environmental releases happen, waste is made daily. It was clear blue water, unsoiled by desecration but blessed with prayers for healing, that was poured in front of the chemical metallurgy research and replacement facility, the super nuclear Walmart to replace the smaller one. Peacefully, seven sat where abolition never did, refused to move from that front gate, a chain-linked fence that warns all to stay away, except those paid to stay and enforce its words. The crowd was too thick, so I poured water I carried on a small shrub. 
while my children played in the rain, oblivious. I imagined its light sinking beneath the rocks, into the earth, into the aquifer, spreading and growing. Healing can happen in waves of glowing prayer, like thunder encouraging crowds who want peace, like a grandmother carried away by her arms by young men in black just doing their job, instead of respecting their elders, who justly refused to respect immoral law. I watched from a bus while they were arrested, grateful for warmth and bravery that I now send back to them as they prepare for chilly courtrooms with the history we know too well. May they be surrounded by guardian light and the rain clouds that bless them that day, unarmed yet powerful with the truth they carry. Different cultures mean different actions. And in this moment, I understand more what resistance can be. A rainbow of warrior water beings, diverse in their means of struggle, united by spirit and a dream to serve creation. in the air, pathogenic interlock on thought molecules like a chemical addiction, the friction of irritation as people envy the serenity of their surroundings, senseless living in concrete dreams with forgotten connection to dirt, how its dusty mud capabilities hold the answer to unlock the wall of disorders that plague planet spirit folk, anxiety and fear of dependency on outside sources, species evolution interrupted by invention after invention, struggling not quite learning to harness positive creative power, forgetting by gradual erasing with each generation how all once all one needed was a tiny universe of a seed and some sky to feel connected to because creative desire flows free from an energy field called life. Greed has built a dam, holding hostage humanity's right to live, distributed masks of a manipulation that have no eyes, Population smiling, smiling weakly through vinyl claustrophobia, nagging intuitions that something is not right with what they are seeing, paralyzing fear of being cut off from the unstable situations that cut us off from our true connections back in time, on galaxy paths lit up by souls. Creative genius remains entwined to power pathways and once held us in an embrace of mystery. The goodbye kiss of our history that lingers on lips passionate at the thought of reunion. Traveling in cycles of repetition, contentment watches injustice with a waiting smile. Supremacy is only as strong as the sickness which supports it, the fear it creates, a toxic mortar cementing the dam that separates us all. Environmental displacement has built a wall behind a shield of conquering dividers kept in place by economic inequality perpetuated by domination that will continue its plan for extinction until even the earth will cry for lack of communal tears and empathy will run dry alongside rivers, a fever born to cure disease that latches on to thoughts of healing, incinerating masks of deception and searing heat, visions of truth restored, unblocked creativity flowing like ribbons of rainbows as dancing feet accept healing of a severed heart, feeling once again the pulse beneath their souls, nerve endings extending into the serenity of surrounding atmosphere. Uh -oh. <laughs> I lost the page here, but... Nerve endings extending into the serenity of surrounding atmosphere. The time for weeping is over. Fight for hope, however you can. So this one is about change. And while we're all working for the change that we want to see, it's important to remember to be patient about it. And even if it doesn't, this one's just kind of about how true change happens. <clears throat> I've been pondering this word, change, lately. Associations fire and thought pulled from multiple meanings, creating comprehension by producing connections, questions, what does it mean, 
to come from our perceived perceptions of time. How place affectionately alters our points of view. It will change because thought wants it to. True change emerges, unfolds, so slowly. An infinite white flower, smooth, like the way clouds roll over and change by currents in the sky. Timeless, like the way rain can cut canyons and already made mountains of stone, giving birth to waterfalls. Been thinking about change, about the struggle for survival, about coming from people who came from change that dominated, swirled harsh like a post-colonial dust cloud, so far reaching. All around, communal memory is fenced off, chopped up in pieces, changed, yet still unfolding, opening into something new. So deeply spiritually beautiful is the way we adapt, how we turn over inherited soil without naming our struggles. There's beauty in how we fought, how people fight back, for necessity and possibility, hope and prayers that pass from elder lips in languages that hold us close, sustaining our center upon hallowed ground, unified by unique perspective, passed beyond generations of changed creation, now a little less intact, a tender wound scarred over. We are a people who hold our children close, surviving anyhow. Strong bonds remain here, like lengua and land, living with life's blood, pumping stories through valleys and montes that connect us to each other still, providing and protecting our free will. What role does our history and elders play when time is so vast, forever in cycle, circular, never separated or divided from itself? We are a whole people. The stories of old, sung and told, and lengua mas dulce, power, beauty, truth of ages. He will go, oh we, sagi wo eating. Such endearing nostalgia that speaks to childhood ears. A transfer of multilingual knowledge that stays strong in the midst of change that we may never live to see, but is happening nonetheless. Some never inherited the tales that taught them connection, never heard the sounds of words whose strength cradles and holds entire cultura, pride in place within a people now who speak of change, who watch for it on horizons, patiently, willingly, actively, passing on stories from a new time, praying while awaiting evolution and fulfillment of a Mixteca flower about to bloom. movement. I wrote this poem uh, with my problem with the name. <laughs> um, and it starts with the definition. Occupy, to live in place. Two, to engage somebody's attention. Three, to fill space or time. Four, to take over a place. Five, to hold position. Orange and turquoise landscapes are upside down. Staring, I lie awake, excited to catch the sun for a good morning kiss. Sincere gratitude and cornmeal slip from my being, like petals drifting from a dying flower. Cold rain speeds up the change this time of year when I watch the bosque sing. Listen to its truth-telling in the evenings, pondering the dead coyote, hoping it wasn't the one who crossed our yard at twilight. Someone should skin it, make use of that amazing fur that is the colors of the trees in autumn light and deserts. A strange thought for morning prayers. So much has happened in a short time, and I cannot bring myself to occupy, occupy a place that is already my own. <laughs> Some things are not relevant in this place of timelessness, and I can think of one space I would occupy to reclaim, and how my demands would be that we deserve more job options, not having to work for those words that echo on cliff houses that quietly see all, record their own history in sedimentary rock, sandstone that lends colors to sunrises. I am become death, destroyer of worlds. Split in two spirits, flock to work there, justified, proud, grateful, like I am this morning, for moments of intuition and spirit around sacred fires and words of healing on cheeks of children where I paint gardens and the burn in my back is a job well done.
For free I give of myself whenever I can in return for waking up to the sky and with hopes that children will never have to occupy their own home or be seduced into work that contaminates the life they were given. That deer will continue to live in these mountains and we can remain here finally free as we see who occupied who. That we dwell here, live so fully and whole, conscious at last of our own worth and what we deserve. The Montes know they are waiting for us, patient, silent, and strong, to open up and let the floodwaters cleanse our choices, wash away the violence, reconnect disjointed bodies, and honest day's work lies in the land. And in those untainted spaces we create freely from ourselves, guided by whispering stone for all to share in the giving, creating at last the place we hold together.